welcome to the Pirate MIDI Bridge MIDI Controller tutorial series. In this first video, we're going to cover the basic navigation and construction of the Bridge 6. So you'll see here, I have in front of me two fantastic sturdy MIDI controllers. On the right is the Bridge 6, on the left is the Bridge 4, named very creatively by the number of switches they have. They each have foot switches, an OLED screen, and some RGB LEDs, two per switch. The bridge controller uses approximately 200 milliamps of current draw, which you'll need to know if you're putting this on a pedal board. The first thing you'll probably want to do when you take it out of the box is plug it in and play around. To do that, there's just a couple of things you need to know. The main thing is that to get into the menu, you hold the two left switches like I'm doing here and you get into the menu. The menus are pretty self-explanatory. The UI generally shows in each corner and next to each switch the controls that are available to you right now. So here I'm going to be scrolling through the menu selections with these switches. And on the bridge four, it's the same. The only difference is that on the bridge four, to select the middle option, you just have to press the two switches at the same time, like this. So now we're in the switches menu. To exit, press the two top switches together, which is the same as on the bridge six where you press the center switch to exit. If you are a few levels deep in the menu like this, there will often be an exit icon and you can press and hold that middle switch to go completely out of the menu to the main screen. On the main screen, you'll see that by default, we are in the extended UI mode. That means that you have a bank name, the foot switch names, and these lines for these boxes which show the flexiport modes. So those little boxes will show icons and graphs depending on which flexiport mode you're using. The same is true for the bridge four, um, except that you have some extra space in the middle here. So you have some icons that help you remember how to bank up and bank down. Which brings me to how you bank up and bank down. On the bridge six, you press switch two and three together to bank up like this. Press switches one and two together to bank down like this. And the banks are circular. So you can go down to bank 99 and up to bank zero. The same is true for the bridge four, of course. All the settings of the bridge MIDI controllers can be changed on the device. If you're on stage and you need to get something, there's no need for you to get your computer out. You can change anything you need to on the go. Let's enter the menu and I'll show you one of the important things, which is changing a MIDI message. We'll choose the switch that we want to change the message of. Let's say switch two. We don't want to change the config of the switch. We want to go through to the messages. We want to change the messages we want to go to the message stack. For this one, we're going to go to toggle on and we're going to press edit. When you're editing a MIDI message, there are two screens to be aware of. So we have on here the type of message, which you can change obviously with using switches one and three, the channel, the number, the value, etc. But the second screen shows which outputs you want to send that message to. So the bridge six has four different possible MIDI outputs. We have the DIN5 MIDI out, the USB MIDI out, and the two flexi ports, which can be configured to do four different types of TRS MIDI. And if you have different devices connected up to each of these outputs, you can actually isolate one message to only be sent to that device by changing the MIDI outputs of this message. So I've now turned off the MIDI outputs to Flexiport 2, the DIN 5 and the USB. And this message, and only this message, will be sent to Flexiport 1 if I have it in MIDI out mode. So we'll save that and exit the menu. Another thing you might want to do is add or delete messages on the go. So let's enter the menu again. We'll choose our switch, switch two again, we'll go to messages and choose our message stack. You can see we have add or delete 
on switches four and six. If I add a message, it just adds another message to the stack. You can see here it now says we're on message two of two in this stack. So we can change the type. I'm gonna change it to a program change. I wanna send this on channel four and I wanna send program change number four. And I'm just gonna save that because I don't care which of the MIDI outputs it goes to. See, I scroll there, I'm leaving them all on and they are all on by default. So any message that you add, it will by default get sent and only if you are very particular about where you want that message to not go, if it's causing problems, then you can go in and turn that off. So let's save that message. And as you can see now, we have that message saved here, which is next to our control change message from earlier. And we can add another message or we can delete that message. Let's delete that message. Now we'll exit the menu and we're back to where we started. Two other messages you might want to know how to add as soon as you open your box are expression messages and bank messages. Expression pedals can send two different sets of messages. Within each bank, each expression pedal can send up to 16 messages simultaneously. But there's also a global message stack which can send 16 extra MIDI messages and they are persistent across every bank and they don't change. I'll show you where to find them. Expression pedals, very easy. When you enter the expression pedals menu, you'll notice that there are four expression pedal options. Expression pedal 1A, 1B, 2A, and 2B. If you're not using our expression doubler device, you'll just use either expression pedal 1A or expression pedal 2A, depending on whether you're using flexi port 1 or flexi port 2. Let's use flexi port 1 for this example. And now you'll see in the expression messages, we have bank messages, which we can enter, and there are no messages there. And adding a message here is exactly the same as I showed earlier, there's just a limited number of options you can assign to an expression pedal because of the nature of the difference of the type of message, of course. Now we'll exit that and I'll show you where to find the global expression messages. We go to the global menu and then we go to global expression pedals. 1A and it's exactly the same thing. We add a message using foot switch four we can save it, edit it, exit the menu. And that's how you add expression messages. The other type of message, of course, is a bank message. A bank message is sent when you enter that bank. So when you're changing banks, you might want to send out some MIDI commands so that your gear goes into a default state that you want for that set. So let's add some bank messages for bank zero go to bank messages and it's exactly the same as the other types. Um, you can add all the different kinds of messages here, smart messages included. And then when you enter this bank, a control change of channel one, number zero, value zero will be sent to all the MIDI outputs. That's just the default message that I've added there. You can make that do whatever you like. One other kind of message that you'll probably want to know about is the power on message. This is very similar to the bank change messages, except it sends those messages when the device powers on. So that if you need to get your gear into a default state when you turn everything on, your bridge can handle that instead of you. I think that covers just about everything for adding messages and basic navigation on the Bridge 6 and the Bridge 4. If you have any questions, please ask them down in the comments or contact us on our Discord server or via Facebook. Thank you.